If you've watched our channel, you've probably heard us talk about the weather in the past. We talk about it quite a bit. In fact, if you do a Google search, Oregon Coast weather or Oregon Coast weather, what you need to know will probably come up first. But we've never talked about the snow. Well, that's because there hasn't been much to talk about until now. We had record snow in Oregon and on the Oregon coast. And in this video, I'm going to cover all that and everything that you need to know if you do travel to the Oregon coast and potentially encounter snow. All that starts now. I'm going to show you a few different uh, pictures and articles and talk about what happened here on the Oregon coast a few weeks ago. I'm going to start with this picture here. This is probably the one that I saw circulating the most. This is in Pacific City. Uh, these people are standing at the top of Cape Kiwanda. Definitely looks strange seeing snow on top of Cape Kiwanda. Pelican Brewery is right down here, down in this corner. If you're not familiar with Pacific City and want to get to know it a little bit better, we have a video on Pacific City that you can watch right up there. So what happened recently along the Oregon coast? Now, for our viewers, for the people that reach out to us, for the people that we've helped move to the Oregon coast, the weather is a common question, and sometimes people ask us about snow. If you've asked us about snow, you've probably gotten some sort of answer to the fact of it snows occasionally. When it does snow, it usually doesn't stick for more than a few hours. Maybe it'll stick in some places for like 24 hours, but nothing like this picture that you see right here. So we've always told people in the past, hey, you're not going to have to worry about snow living on the Oregon coast, but now that might be changing. A few weeks ago, and as you can see, this article is from February, late February, which is pretty late in the year, we had record snowfall in a lot of places uh, in Oregon, including along the Oregon coast, all the way from Astoria, all the way down to Brookings. Yes, Brookings had snow that stuck. So what's the story with this picture? Well, this uh, this person uh, is a snowboarder. I think uh, originally from Montana, if I remember correctly, used to do a lot used to do a lot of snowboarding in Mo Montana. Uh, if you live along the Oregon coast, for a lot of you, the closest mountain up north is going to be Mount Hood. If you're closer to Central Oregon coast, maybe Mount Bachelor. Um, not really sure where the best snowboarding is going to be from the southern Oregon coast. Probably you're probably going to have to go north to Mount Bachelor to find snowboarding. So for people living along the Oregon coast, there's not really anything that's that close. Mount Hood, Mount Bachelor, from wherever you're at on the Oregon coast, it's going to be hours away, three, four hours, farther away than most people are going to drive to go snowboarding. So if you live along the Oregon coast, you're not going to do a whole lot of snowboarding. So in this case, it looks like uh, this person uh, took advantage of the opportunity to snowboard Cape Kiwanda, which again, you might want to check out our Pacific City video uh, really gives you an idea of uh, how big that hill is uh, for Cape Kiwanda and, and why it's so popular. This right here, this is the backside of Cape Kiwanda. There's that same picture again. This is on the other side of Cape Kiwanda. So this is unlike anything I've ever seen at the Oregon coast. This looks more like Mount Hood. And for somebody that's lived in Oregon my entire life, I can probably count on my hand the number of days that we've had like this. You know, when you're going to school, growing up, you're hoping for that snow day. Well, in Oregon, those days uh, were very, very rare. But it seems like now, maybe about the past four or five years or so, we've had a lot more snow, probably more snow in the past five years than I've had the rest of my life combined living in Oregon. So I just want to show you a few more of these pictures here. And the snow was worse in some places than others. It's definitely worse uh, central to northern Oregon coast. Doesn't look like they had snow too bad on the southern Oregon coast. I didn't see any road closures either. There were quite a few roads that got closed down. I'll go over those towards the end of this video. So in case you're coming here uh, or in wintertime, you can kind of know what to look out for. And by the way, welcome back to the channel. Or if you're new to this channel, living on the Oregon coast, and you'd like to see more about what it's like to live on the Oregon coast, Coast, make sure and hit the subscribe button and tap the bell. That way you'll be notified every week when we drop a new video. We've got tons of videos about just about every town along the Oregon coast if you want to check out our library. And if you're somebody that's thinking about taking the next steps, I'm a licensed broker in the state of Oregon. As much as we like making these videos, we'd love to help you move here. So if you're somebody that's thinking about taking the next steps, you can call us, email us, text us, or you can click the link below in the description of this video to hop into our calendar and schedule a Zoom call with us. No matter how you get in touch with us, we've got your back when it comes to moving to the Oregon coast. So the thing about snow in Oregon, and particularly snow in Oregon in places where it's at sea level, which you typically don't see a whole lot of snow, the coast, the gorge that goes towards Idaho uh, with the Columbia River separating Washington and Oregon. 
PDX, a lot of PDX is going to be sea level elevation up to, there's some going to be some places, five, six, seven hundred feet. And usually when it does snow, it's usually those spots up in the hills, five, six, seven hundred feet or so that are kind of lightly getting the dusting. Oftentimes, all the way down to the floor, you don't see snow sticking. This is actually uh, from Brookings. You can see it looks like they got at least an inch there. I don't think it lasted too long. Didn't last too long anywhere along the Oregon coast, but it feels like snow is becoming a little bit more common in Oregon at the sea level. So that's part of the reason why I wanted to make this video. Perhaps next winter or the winter after that, we might see snow like this again. Like I said, I've never seen snow like this in my lifetime, but it does feel like it's been more common the, the, the past four or five years or so. Another picture from Brookings. Uh, check out this video. This is actually from Coos Bay. And again, this only only lasted for a couple of days, but the problem with snow in Oregon is that a lot of people aren't used to driving in the snow. So when it does happen, they are unprepared. You usually don't have snow tires. We also have elevation too. A lot of other states in the country that like to make fun of us that get a lot more snow than we do don't typically have the hills that we do. So when you combine people that aren't used to driving in the snow with vehicles that aren't or vehicles that don't have traction devices or tires that can drive in the snow with some hills, it always ends up in a, a lot of cars stuck on the side of the road. This article right here says uh, the National Weather Service says that more than 10 inches of snow have officially fallen on Portland since Wednesday. On the Oregon coast and the coast range, down trees closed several roads Thursday, including US 101 north of Neskowin. That's just uh, north of Lincoln City. So people coming from the north weren't able to get south of Lincoln City. There's not really a quick way around that. And then US 20 and 34, those are down by Corvallis uh, going towards Newport. Now I did happen to drive uh, this road at this time. Uh, I was in Newport around the time that this happened. And I will say that if you do have a vehicle that has traction, uh, a, a traction devices or traction tires, snow tires, you're probably going to be okay. So it, it's if you're used to driving in snow, if you're coming from a place where it snows every every winter, then you're probably going to be fine. But like I said, a lot of people in Oregon aren't used to that, so they, they tend to end up in the side of the ditch. And I was in Newport uh, for the Wine and Seafood Festival that's uh, mentioned right here. That festival was postponed uh, for a day. This kind of happened on a Thursday, which is when the event started that uh, – goes through Sunday, so they postpone that into uh, Friday. If you want to check out that video, you can check out that video here too. Made a little video on the Newport Wine and Seafood Fest from this past year. And this gives you, th here's some traffic cam shots. This gives you an idea of uh, all over the Oregon coast from Lincoln City to Cannon Beach to Newport. This is how it looked everywhere. And you can see the roads look like they're in pretty good shape. So yeah, generally it seems like ODOT, Oregon Department of Transportation is a uh, pretty good about uh, keeping the roads clear. So again, for some of you people who are used to a lot of snow, this might look rather tame to you, but it's stuff like this. Like this is in Astoria, got a lot of hills in Astoria. Uh, if you're on a hill and you have roads like this in Oregon, you're not going anywhere. Even if you have traction devices or uh, snow tires. And let me just show you a few more pictures of what things look like. Here's a picture uh, I found from Rockaway Beach. I didn't get a chance to get out on the, on the beach and uh, run around when it was snowing. Definitely would have been fun to do. I'm sure those people had fun. So one thing I learned, though, that, uh, and, and again, somebody that's as somebody that's lived in Oregon my entire life, I have never heard of this before, but I came across this article, Oregon has the poorest weather radar coverage in the country. Last month's record-breaking snowfall wasn't easy to track, but an atmospheric sciences professor says better coastal radar coverage would have helped. Last month's record-breaking snowstorm left Portland reeling for days. Commuters headed to work on February 22nd, expecting not much more than a light dusting, but a storm ended up dumping 11 inches of snow, turning roads into a catastrophic mess by early evening. Poor radar coverage means weather systems are tougher to track in Oregon. So this is, I hadn't heard this before, but February 26th storm is a good example because it involved a band of moisture moving to Oregon's central coast, right where a radar gap stretches nearly 200 miles south of Lincoln City. Now, not to complain about weather forecasts and weather people, I actually feel like when I check the weather, it's usually a lot more accurate uh, than I maybe recall growing up. So it feels like that kind of joke about the weather always, the weather forecast always being wrong doesn't feel like it's, you know, as much of a joke or as funny anymore. But you do in, in Oregon, when it does snow, it does seem to catch us off guard. Usually when they say it's going to be sunny, it's sunny. Usually when they say it's going to rain, it's going to rain. But uh, the snow is a little bit harder to predict. And I guess maybe this is why.
I'd never heard this before. Now, it's not like when we look at, uh, and I pulled this up specifically, I went and searched for some sort of radar. It's not like people in Oregon, when we see these like this radar on the news, there's some big gap right here along the central Oregon coast, 200 miles south of Lincoln City. So it's not like for people that have been living here forever, you know, this was something that was necessarily evident. But it makes sense because we haven't historically been the best at predicting snow. And that also kind of goes into some of the problems. You know, again, you get people that aren't used to driving the snow, don't have snow tires, don't even expect the snow, like it said in this article, maybe expected a light dusting, you get 11 inches in this, instead. This is the result, lots of people stuck on the side of the road. So if you're living on the Oregon coast or thinking about moving to the Oregon coast and uh, maybe a little bit worried about snow, maybe you've never driven in snow before because you're from California or Arizona or Texas, like so many people that reach out to us are, here's kind of what you need to know. So this right here is the coastal range. The highest point in this range uh, is right here over by Corvallis. Uh, should be right about there. Mary's Peak. I think it's just under 5,000 feet. So we're not talking about a ton of elevation. A lot of this along here, we're talking thousand to a couple thousand feet on, on the coastal range. And there's a handful of roads. So Highway 26, this is going to be probably the most commonly traveled road uh, to get from the most populous place of Portland in the state of Oregon over to the coast, over to Cannon Beach and Seaside, two places people commonly go. So Highway 26 uh, oftentimes has problems. Highway 6 right here in the, going through the Tillamook Forest, you'll run into issues. Don't see it as much. I don't think you have as much elevation right here, 18 to 22. Neskowin, this is this is the section of uh, 101 that was closed for a couple of days that was mentioned in one of those first articles that we saw. This is also a trouble area too. People going from Corvallis, we mentioned, uh, that article mentioned 34 and 20 being closed. This is, I actually drove this around this time. And actually, I, I've encountered uh, kind of bad snow um, before this, actually, this year, uh, this December, I was leaving Newport actually to go west one day, and there wasn't any snow in the forecast. And right about here, just outside of town, is where the snow started sticking. And when snow sticks, people don't expect snow. Like I've mentioned so many times already in this video, you're going to have people end up in the in the ditch. So that's that's a uh, this highway right here. Twenty can get pretty bad. Beyond that, uh, 34 over to Waldport, 36, th 38 over to Reedsport. I haven't encountered much snow uh, on those roads or heard of them closing down any time in the past. Now, like I mentioned, weather seems like it's been changing over the past few years. That could change, but your real big trouble spots are going to range here from 20 to 26 heading east to west you know, or either direction. So if you're somebody that lives along the Oregon coast, maybe you have to go inland for um, health care or occasionally sometimes you have to go to like a bigger bigger city like a Salem or Corvallis or, or Portland. That's one thing that you're just going to want to be cognizant of during the winter time. And yes, we are almost into springtime. It actually snowed, didn't stick, but actually snowed. It snowed here a few times uh, in March. So you might, if you're going to live around this area and you have to travel ever east to go over the coastal range, you really want to be safe, I think, uh, from November to uh, March every year. Hope that gives you a better feel as to what you might expect with snow. Again, there really wasn't snow in the past along the Oregon coast, at least that ever stuck or caused problems for people. But the way it's looking, the way things are trending, it's something that you might need to keep on the radar in the future. If you have questions about moving to the Oregon coast, you can call, text, email, or click the link below if you want to schedule a Zoom call with us. And if you made it this far in the video, give us a thumbs up, lets us know we're doing a good job. Feel free to comment and make sure and subscribe if you want to see more videos about living on the Oregon coast. Until next time, take care, everyone.